Poetry and spoken word are two very similar yet separate terms. Poetry paints beautiful portraits on pages, but when these words are spoken, they give each image the life it deserves. So to say that spoken word is poetry is only partially right. These words are not meant for isolation in silent spaces. These words are meant to be heard with or without a mic. Each word meant to be said, these holy testimonies, this daily bread. So come get fed with words we levitate from pages, fire we unshackle, heat that we release from cages. We call it freedom. Come get you some. So when you're on stage and you're pouring it all out, what's that like for you to perform and be in front of an audience? It would seem like it would be vulnerable. It is vulnerable. <laughs> it's, it's extremely vulnerable. Um, I enjoy it though. I think it's um, important for other people to see that type of vulnerability. I think that the way our world is set up is it's meant to stifle that. You're not supposed to be open. You're not supposed to be honest. You're not supposed to talk about what's bothering you or what trauma you've been through. Those things, the trauma, the oppression, all those things are meant to silence you. And so for me, it's, it's freedom. For me to get up on a stage and look out into the audience and make eye contact with people and know that what I have to say may change someone's life. From these raw artists with their souls on display, hearts bare, reciting poetic prayers, speaking life into existence. The themes remain consistent. Faith, love, hope. Finding healing and finding meaning, speaking words soaked with hurt. So keep speaking. Speaking until you master the art of refuting fallacy. Speaking until your passion smashes into your reality. Speaking for your survival. Speaking for your health. Keep speaking. This speaking is self-help. You are really interested in motivating people to, to reach their highest level. Why is that important to you? Mm, I think that goes back to personally feeling like I wasn't worthy feeling like I didn't have value, and then being able to find out that that just wasn't true. That I am important, that I am someone that is necessary to be here. So for me, it's about speaking about that and hopefully somebody, because I know there are lots of people who feel that way, young and old, um, that somebody can maybe feel inspired and motivated to, to find the value within themselves. But can anyone tell me which came first, the word or the voice? Or were both so simultaneously necessary, the priority of the existence defied choice? Or maybe our creator knew if we could not squeeze these pains through vocal cords, we could choke. Not from the unforeseen things that occur and disappoint, but from suppressing words that sometimes only in our minds get spoke. These spoken words confirm that though there is darkness, you are not alone. Mm -hmm. That means that there is hope. Mm -hmm. We talked about how important it is to stay positive, you know, to keep that frame of mind. So what are some of the things that you do to stay positive? Well, one thing that I do on a daily basis, because it's about being intentional, about being positive. It's a decision that you make. Right. Um, and so affirming yourself every day is really important. For me, it's really important especially because with the writing, you get really vulnerable and you open up stuff. And sometimes you start to doubt, like, well, I've had all this stuff happen to me, or maybe I, you know, I'm not important. Um, and the affirmations just let you know, it's a reminder to self, okay. you know, that you are. Okay, and what are some of those? Um, more recently, I say to myself, I'm confident, I'm capable. My presence enriches the lives of others. My voice is important and I exist for a reason greater than any struggle. I say those to myself over and over again throughout the day and it keeps me focused, keeps me focused on the positive. And you have a book, Testimony. Yep. Tell me about that. It's really um, an intimate piece. It's my very first self-published um, chat book. And um, I've been told it's a lot more personal than what you would expect from someone putting out something for their first time. <laughs> um, I, re I really went into my personal life um, as far as losing my father um, four years ago, losing my grandmother six years ago, two very, very important people to me. 
and what I've learned from dealing with that grief. Um, and I'm also kind of going through just things that I've experienced, the bullying, um, but really what I want people to take from the book, um, if you, even if you can't relate to every poem, which is fine, is just the need to be open. Um, the need to be vulnerable and to talk about your stuff. You know, talk about it and get it out. Don't hold it in, don't push it down. I've been doing that for 30 years of my life and um, it doesn't do anybody any good. Get it out there. So finally, I have that out there and um, there's still more to be said though. So if you wanna go along with me. I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. okay. So <laughs> it's really just as simple as, and I suggest, you know, writing it down, taking a picture of it, put it on your phone. Um, on your mirror? On your mirror, on your front door, wherever, you know. So just um, repeat after me. Okay. I am confident. I am confident. I am capable. I am capable. My presence enriches the lives of others. My presence enriches the lives of others. My voice is important. My voice is important. And I exist for a reason that's greater than any struggle. And I exist for a reason that's greater than any struggle. There it is. I like that. There you you feel powerful when yeah. you're saying those words. Yes. That's what it's there if, for. If nobody's talking those words over you, talk them over yourself, right? Exactly. I like exactly. that. <laughs> So keep writing poetry bred from broken homes, meant for microphones. These words that come from broken hearts, play for laughs and one night bones. These words wise and heavy with struggle do not belong in little notebooks and tucked in tongues, stuck in safe places. These words should not be limited to simply shower recitations. Make public your passionately prophetic proclamations. You never know whose life you might be saving. Daily I'm grateful for the time allowed for my life to thrive, so I strive to turn the turn up into a revolution. Because if you ain't living liberated, you just buying your time until you die. But why would you or I ever decide that dying is a solution when we're alive to fight right now? You see, those thoughts infiltrate and occupy the tiny gaps within our minds, piling up like pollution, seeping up and swallowing the ground. Those thieving thoughts still smiles, turning them upside down, leaving us craving love's acceptance. We turn up the sound with screams and shouts, then we breathe in and out. Mm. Reminded that the response to frustration need not always be loud. When your silence is laced with deep meditation, you become embraced with powerful sensations of ancestral vibrations. Okay. So you gotta stay in love with the now. I stay in love with the now. From sunset to sunrise, the darkness is necessary time for rejuvenation and spiritual exhalation. It keeps me in love with the wild, yeah. the amazing, the magnificent. Perfect time for conversations with pride and patience. Sometimes you are the only light you need to light the path that leads to the manifestation of your destiny. As there will be times when your light flickers so dimly that you cannot see your way and you get lost in an over-exaggeration of uncertainty, screaming to God the Father you never really knew for just a taste of normalcy, consistency, the reciprocity of empathy but no one told you it would be so scarce. So you wish your innocence had died at birth. Rare to meet compassion, even on a Sunday, sitting hollow vessel in the church. So praise the Lord, yes, praise the sun, the moon, and the earth, for we are they and they are we. We carry in our minds the universe. The energy fueling our flesh is both the last and the first of its kind, so never mind what hate may come your way. You got work to do. We all got work to do. Let's get after it today. Thank y'all. Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo.